Good evening, Robert Scribbler. It is May 13th, 2019. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I'm going to talk about a major outbreak of wildfires that is presently occurring in Mexico. And this wildfire outbreak has spurred officials to issue a state of emergency as of this past weekend as a rash of wildfires has spurred hundreds of uh, firefighters to combat the flames and has blanketed numerous uh, cities and a large region of Me Mexico with, with toxic smoke and ash. And this cloud of smoke has issued as far north at present as Mexico City, where authorities are issuing air quality warnings. Now I'm going to show you some satellite pictures of these wildfires a little bit later in this video, but before I do, I'd like to talk a little bit about what are some of the drivers of the wildfires that are ongoing at present. And, and as I get into this discussion, I'd like to just note that climate change in general has an impact on weather and, and in particular extreme weather at both ends of the hydrological cycle. Now, what does that mean? In essence, with each one degree Celsius of global surface warming, you increase the rate of evaporation and precipitation by about six to eight percent. What that means is that lands tend to dry out faster and when rainfall does occur, it tends to be more intense. So you get more intense droughts, more intense hot periods, in, in a number of regions, more intense wildfires. And on the other side of the hydrological spectrum, you end up with more intense rainfall. So you get this polarization of weather as the earth warms, driven to more and more extreme conditions. And uh, this graphic provided by the Climate Reality Project provides a, a good, basic understanding of, of what's going on with the water cycle as we get into a range of about 1.1 degrees Celsius above 1880s temperatures, which, which is definitely a range where we are now seeing increased instances of severe weather associated with human forced climate change. Now, specifically drilling down to Mexico, I'd just like to point out that over the past, let's make sure I'm on the right, yeah, uh, over the past 48 months, southern Mexico in particular has seen much drier than normal conditions. This indicated by a soil moisture monitor, which is provided by the Global Drought Monitor, and showing uh, quite a hot spot here in southern Mexico. And this hot spot is an indicator of severe drought in the region and a long-term ongoing drought, in this case, running for at least four years. Now, during recent weeks and months, it has gotten rather hot in southern Mexico with temperatures ranging around three to five degrees Celsius above normal or more. And Ocean surface conditions in the region are also showing warmer than normal sea surface temperatures, with temperatures off of Mexico ranging about 0.5 to 1 degree Celsius above average, and temperatures in the Pacific Ocean just south of southern Mexico ranging from about 1 to, well, 1 half degrees Celsius above normal to 2 degrees Celsius above normal. So this warm ocean condition in this region is also helping to contribute to elevated temperatures and a continuance of the drought regime for the region. I'd just like to point out that looking forward, I'm going to go ahead and look at uh, surface temperature anomalies. The, these warmer than normal conditions, uh, looking to the left of, of the picture here, these uh, warmer than normal surface conditions are expected to continue over the next seven days in the GFS monitor. So, so these warmer than normal conditions are, are 
are expected to remain in place for this region, which is already experiencing severe drought and severe wildfires as, as a result of this drought. So looking at the satellite shots provided by NASA, I'm going to go ahead and zoom out here a little bit so you can get a, a bit of context. The red dots that you see in this picture are thermal anomalies or hot spots indicative of wildfires. The gray hue that you see above these fires is a smoke plume and you can see it bleeding out here into the Gulf of Mexico. Backing the frames up to early May, we see that the wildfire outbreak has been ongoing for some time, at least since May 1st. And I'm just going to go ahead and advance the frames here so you can see how intense the wildfire outbreak is, how persistent it is, and how much smoke it tends to dump out into the surrounding landmass as well as into the Gulf of Mexico as atmospheric circulation has generally pulled the smoke plume northward toward central Mexico and into the Gulf of Campeche, I'm sorry, into the Bay of Campeche just north of the Yucatan here as we get into May 12th and today, which is May 13th. So very intense wildfire activity. I'm going to go ahead and just zoom in on some of these smoke, smoke plumes here so you can just see the wildfires ranging in the vegetative areas here in southwestern Mexico. Very intense smoke plumes. Note that the scale on the right hand side here shows about one inch of screen as 10 miles. So this subset of wildfires is about 120 miles long, raging through this forested area with wildfire hot, hot spots throughout southern Mexico, as well as smoke plumes covering much of the region. Yet another large region of wildfires in southeastern Mexico as well. So very intense wildfires dumping a lot of smoke into the atmosphere over Mexico as a result of severe drought conditions, ongoing persistent drought conditions. Over the next few days, we expect the, the trough in the eastern U.S. to reverse into a ridge pattern, which is expected to pull this smoke into the eastern U.S. Now, it's uncertain if this smoke will affect air quality in the U.S. It might, it might particularly along the Gulf of Mexico, see some reduced air quality. But what's perhaps more concerning is the fact that weather models do indicate a, a high degree of severe thunderstorm potential over the next 10 days as smoke gets injected into the eastern U.S. And why is that a concern? Well, recent scientific studies indicate that large regions of smoke coming from Central America and being pulled over the U.S. have the potential to increase tornado severity. So if you're looking at a pattern where Mexico is, is essentially burning, where there's a, a large plume of smoke moving northward over the Gulf of Mexico and getting pulled into a stormy pattern in the east, which has already generated intense and extreme severe weather. And recent science that indicates that smoke particles in the atmosphere can increase tornado severity together with a forecast for a, a, a very high potential for severe weather over the next 10 days for the central and eastern U.S. And then you're looking at a number of ingredients that, that may spell trouble as, as time moves forward.
I'd just like to give a shout out to Michael Ventress from t uh, on Twitter here, who posted this graphic, as well as to NASA Worldview, which is an invaluable resource for global weather cl and climate analysis, and to the Global Drought Monitor as well, also a, a, a valuable resource. So overall, some very severe fires in Mexico, spewing a lot of smoke, which could help to fuel severe weather over the coming days in the U.S. Thank you for joining me, and I'll be chatting with you soon.